Hi folks. Hey, about a week ago, I posted a photograph with some very specific shapes that were press molded and got a tremendous amount of response for it. Thanks for that. Uh, I also got a lot of people asking me, how do you make those things? Well, it's a fairly easy process and it's a three-step process. And in this video, I'm going to take you through the three steps. But these are the shapes that were on uh, Facebook and they're just a simple curve of a slab. Uh, they are not thrown, so they really just have a very small level base on them. They're slabbed out. I could have decorated them, which we'll talk about later. These are made from my typical production clay body, which I mix here in the studio, and uh, I could certainly make them out of any type of clay, as you can also. So the first step is making the molds. Now this is the mold that was made for these. They're bisque fired and I tend to make all my molds with uh, bisque fired clay. It's very porous so the slab goes on and comes off very quickly within 30 to 60 minutes. I don't have to wait overnight. Plaster in my opinion is much slower. Now when I make these I uh, I created a, a rim here, or a gallery. Now it's not the gallery that I'm looking for, but it's the, the hook underneath, or the ledge. So I can pick it up out of the form without damaging or touching the form that might be spread all the way to the rim of this thing. So that's just a little handy thing. One doesn't have to have it there, but boy it sure helps over a long period of time. And once you make these, they last forever unless you break them, but um, so let's go over to the wheel and I'll show you what I've been doing making molds. Now one can make that gallery at the inside of course two different ways. One is leave it thick and split it which I often do but I also roll it over. So that means making this kind of thin at the top. I do want the rims of my molds to be square cornered, meaning they're not rounded rims. Now when I throw bowls, my uh, left hand, my left fingertips, left hand fingertips are always starting in the center and I can feel the curvature as it comes out. As soon as I can I get the, the hands connected. At this point, I'm not real worried about the heavy th thickness down here. I'm going to trim a lot of that away. Now, as I'm making this pull, I'm really pushing in with my knuckle down here, then pushing the clay against my knuckle. And I throw these kind of slowly. I'm in no great hurry. give you a little more light down here. Okay, now I want to make this bowl surface, the exterior surface, as smooth as possible. So I can take a rib to it, and I often use these old credit cards, or I can trim it away now, which is an easy thing to do. I'm just lightly pushing the tool onto the surface of the clay, and it gets rid of all the throwing lines that I created when I pulled the, the bowl upward. I'll then finish it with some sort of smooth, smooth rib.
Okay, before I go further, I'm going to create the rim, that gallery I was speaking about. Better to have too much clay down here at the foot of this pot than not enough. So when I lift this off the, the wheel, it's going to seem like it's heavy. I'm going to dampen this, dampen this, and then I'm just going to start to roll it inward. Thicken it up. Now the outside hand, this hand, with a sponge in it, is just trying to keep the bowl from expanding too much and going flat. So I've, now I've got it turned inward. And again, it's not the gallery here that I'm concerned about, it's the ledge underneath. Okay, and a final shaping on the outside. To the rim, mostly to the rim. That's what this shaping is about. Get a square corner here. And then just <clears throat> soften everything off with a sponge. Now I've got my ridge inside, my gallery or my handle hold, which is good. Now, in our tool line, you'll see these small undercut ribs. I use these a lot on small work, but we decided some months ago to make a big one and that's what this one is and the reason we made it larger was for working on larger pots number one but it has more reach I can get under the foot of that pot much easier without my hand getting too close to the pot okay I'm gonna wire it off And there's another mold. Now, of course, I'm going to trim from about halfway across the base of the mold or the top of the mold and end over here. So this is all going to get rounded off. But again, I don't want it flat on this surface once I've trimmed it. Okay, here's a mold I threw yesterday. I threw uh, four of them and I trimmed two of them already, but I'll take you to, through the process. Um, one thing that's important, and I did make a gallery at the inside ledge here, uh, so I could uh, lift the mold out of the pot when it's drying. But one thing that's really important is that this area below here, this width, the diameter of the foot when it's thrown, wants to be as small as possible. Also, very thick. What I'm not looking for is a mold that's flat on the top that has a curve and a flatness. I'm looking for just a complete hump. Similar to these which I've already trimmed. So let's get this one trimmed. When you're throwing it, it's just a big old bowl. Now I've made one that is uh, nine pounds. That was the large one. And then eight pounds. I made a couple of those. And then one seven pounds. So, I made a variation of sizes here. Um, next step is to get them trimmed. Rim is fairly stiff. Now, I prefer to trim on a foam bat. And the reason for that is, if I'm attaching coils of clay to this edge to stick down onto the wheel head, to stick my pot to the wheel head, the tendency to push on the rim and crack it is really high. So I just prefer to do it this way. This foam bat really works well.
Okay, so I've got the basic trim shape here. I'm going to dampen it just a little bit. And now I'm going to smooth it. Now I don't want a point here, so I'm kind of flowing from the rim in a nice curve all the way to the top. Okay, next step here is to get this dry. Now I'm going to dry it on a bat or on a wearboard sitting on its rim. However, I'm going to put a piece of newspaper between the rim and the wearboard or the bat. Now the paper is going to shrink as the bowl shrinks, so I won't get any cracking problem. Okay, the second step is making the template, which is going to be the outline, the tool we're going to use to cut our slab into the shape we want. And I do it, there are a couple different ways to do it. Um, the one that works easiest for me is to make a paper outline first. Now, how do I get this so it's really even? And it's really simple. Um, so... I have my piece of newspaper, but how big can we make this from one side to the other? That depends on the size of the mold. So, I made a mold. This one's been around here for quite some time. It's a little pointed on top. Maybe I don't really want it that pointed, and the molds I just made are not this pointed. But what I need is a measurement, because I'm going to use this mold as a demo piece here. So, measuring across here, I've got 19 inches from one side to the other across the top. So, I don't need it to be 19 inches. It could be a little bit less, an inch less, a half an inch less. That's up to you. Um, I'm going to make mine 18 inches. Now, the proportion I discovered works best for me is if this is 18 this is going to be two-thirds of that, which is 12, which means from center to edge is 6, from center to end is 9. So that's what I'm going to use this newspaper for, is to make that template. So here's the length. It's going to be 9. It doesn't have to be perfect. And here's six. Okay. Now I'm going to create a curve here and I'm going to do it freehand to start with. Rather make it on the big side so you can trim it down if you don't like it. So we'll see what that's like. I'm going to cut it out. This is like snowflakes, you know, you make them when you were a kid. Cut a little bit, fold it in pieces and then cut. Same thing. Okay, let's see what that as a pattern looks like. I like the ends of it because they're considerably sharp. I don't like the sharpness here, so I'm going to soften that a bit. A little bit more trimming with the scissor. Let's see what that looks like. That's better. Okay, so this is going to be the shape that we're going to transfer onto the slab and make our cup for our form. So we can put this one away. Now I've taken a little bit of liberty here and I already traced this 
or one very similar. Now you can make a template out of newspaper, but that's a one-shot deal. You can make it out of cardboard, which lasts a little bit longer. You can make it out of tar paper. Uh, I just prefer to make it out of something a little more sturdy. So I use this eighth inch plywood, um, attach the handle, it means I can use them for a long time. I might come back and make this form years from now. So I know I have a template to make them. Okay, let's get our slab rolled out and let's get this template transferred into clay. Okay, we're on our way here. You know, I made this slab with a slab roller, which I've had for over 30 years, I think 32 years, and it's probably made over 10,000 slabs in those years. Uh, it's a Bailey slab roller, and man, I love this machine. It's taken uh, no maintenance and no repairs in 32 years. It just is a power, power horse, and... Uh, uh, if you're looking for a slab roller, check out the Bailey ones. Um, okay, my next step is to get this squeegeed smooth. Take the texture of the canvas off the clay. Now, to squeegee these slabs, I'm using a painter's straight edge getting straight lines when they paint. Um, it's a really good surface, good tool to use in the studio. Now I'm going to flip this over and remove the texture from the other side also. Now there's a bump here, a, a little crevice. Now that happened because this piece of canvas had been stored folded and not rolled. So if you use canvas, don't fold it, but roll it up when it's in storage. But we can squeegee that out. Okay, I'm ready to get this slab put onto my mold, but before I do that, I want to think about texturing it. Now, of course, you can use so many different things to texture your slab with. Uh, those fancy rolling pins, stamps, um, you know, sometimes we use embossed wallpaper, put it down and uh, use a rolling pin. Um, this time, I'm going to just make some lines on it. And to do that, here's a texture block, piece of the two that you get when you buy the set. And I just want some curves here. So it's kind of random, but that's all right. I'm going to take my template, set it here, and cut it. What well, doesn't have to be real careful in this step because we're going to rework the, the rim or the edge of this plate or bowl or form later on. So I'm just trying to get it cut out of my slab here. Dogs want to go out. I'll be right back. Come on. All right. So this goes back to recycle. Now I want to get this onto my mold. And to do that, rather than pick it up, which has the potential to put my fingerprints into my slab, I'm going to flip it onto, onto my mold. 
and I'm going to get these ends under control first. Now I've got to get this slab onto a board, which again, just a small thin piece of plywood. My mold. Now, this is sort of a chancy thing to do, but I'm going to try and find the middle of it. You can adjust it later. What I want to do is just get the clay onto the mold at this stage. clay off the canvas. Now it really helps to elevate this whole thing so you can work in front of you. So I'm going to use a banding wheel. Put this whole thing up on a banding wheel. That's pretty well centered. I use these short nap or medium nap uh, paint rollers to get the clay pushed down onto the mold. Now this, I take some time and do this slowly. I don't have to hurry it. Now because we measured, each end is right at the rim of my mold, but that's all right. It's not too long. What I'm trying to do here is put memory into this clay. Uh, stick it tight to the mold and I want it to stay there. Now because this bisque mold is really porous, in about 30 to 60 minutes I can flip this slab off of the mold. What's happening here is there's a hard skin being created uh, at the inside of this clay where it's touching the mold. The mold is sucking the water out of that clay and stiffening it up and it will support the rest of the, the form. I think I need to move it over just a fraction. It is still shifted around. Okay, now while it's upside down, last thing I'm going to do is put my chop on it, my signature stamp. Okay, 30 to 60 minutes from now, we'll get this off. Now, I made a, uh, another of these dishes last night so it would be dry enough to finish this video in one fell swoop. And I pulled it off the mold last night before I went to bed. Um, it's quite stiff. I kept it under plastic overnight. So I've just cut a hole using uh, one of these hole cutter pieces. And my next step is to finish the rim. And I use two tools to do that. I use these sure forms, which you can buy. They're rasp tools, actually a woodworker's tool. Um, I use them constantly in the shop, as most of us do. And the other thing I use is a potato peeler. So let's start the rasping process first. Now you know what? I can tell I'm rocking this thing around. So I'm going to take a piece of foam and set it on foam so I'm not damaging or marking up the rim or the foot of this thing, the foot rim. So I 
One of these days I'm going to make these about three feet long, see what they look like. You could use it as a sled. Now the advantage of using a longer sureform surface or rasp tool is you get a much more consistent long line. These short, these short tools will move with the, con the, the, the flow of the, the piece and I want, I want a long, nice curve. And I'm going to kind of take a little bit more off this face up here at each end. I want to I want to widen it up here. Visually, I think it looks stronger. I'll show you what this looks like. Okay, so there's a width to it up here, which I kind of like. And I'm going to do the same thing on this end. my potato peeler, take off any sharp edge, now when this is virtually bone dry I'm going to come back and use a piece of green scrubby and softly stroke along the rim and soften it. I'm just using my fingertips here. Okay, there's still some cleaning up to do. I'm going to use a green scrubby and soften this circle, the handle. Um, in a short while, we'll get this other one off the mold and we'll see what the ones with the lines looks like. Be right back. All right. We've defined three steps to making these molded forms. One is make the mold, two is make the template of the shape you want to put on the mold, and then make the actual slab and get it onto the mold and get it off the mold. So one, two, three. Um, relative to the mold making, if you find a form made out of something other than clay that you think will work, that has the right curve to it, use it. You don't have to make your own molds. It's just an idea. Okay, so this is the one we put the lines in earlier. This is the one I made yesterday. And let's get this one off the mold. So, oh, I'm pressing just a little bit of flat area here. Now, one can put your own feet on here. You could put two here and nothing. Uh, that would be the third point here. You could put four. You could put three. That's up to you. But me, I kind of like the idea that it rocks and rolls just a little bit. So, let's flip this over and see what happens. See what it looks like. Oh, they're heavy. Huh. I like that. I like the fact, visually, for me, that these lines are slightly curved and so is all of this. There's no straight edges in this whole thing. Now I'm seeing that this end is high and that's okay. 
we can drop it down a little bit. All right. My next step is to put the hole here. Now, because this is a bigger shape, a bigger scale than the first ones I made and put online, I'm going to put a bigger hole here. Okay, this is still really pliable. It's stiff in here, but it's really soft out here. My next step, as I show you on the last one, is to clean the edge and um, clean the circle and let it dry. So, you've got the whole idea. It's not hard. Thanks for watching. Be safe.